welcome to the Mindful Healers podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Liang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We are healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome to the Mindful Healers podcast. Today's episode is on changing your relationship with your body. Nothing in these episodes should be construed as medical advice. Today's episode is going to be another solo cast, and I'm going to do a series of these solo casts on some mindful coaching topics. I've done several recent live coaching sessions on some really fun and exciting topics and wanted to share them here on the podcast so more of you can learn and understand some of these concepts and hopefully change your life. This is also a continuation of our change your relationship series and so many things to change and shift and uplevel our relationships with. So the intention of today's episode is to notice how often you are being mean to yourself and your body and to share some mindful tools and strategies to help you stop. I hope that you will discover how mindfulness can be the first step to noticing, noticing things you like about yourself, as well as the things that you don't like about yourself, and discover ways that you can shift your perspective about your relationship with your body. Some takeaways from today's episodes will be six tools that you can try on and see if they help you. Another takeaway is a strong message to join me for yoga or coaching so you can practice these tools. What you practice grows. Another takeaway is I would like to offer that perhaps you have done enough being mean to yourself in your life, and perhaps you've spent enough time not being on the same team as your body. And I'm hoping that today's episode will help you make that shift. You and your body are on a long life journey together, and being on the same team makes it way better. So the impetus for this podcast, uh, funnily enough, I like to share stories, is a fat mirror. I was recently on a vacation in a very old cottage, and it had an old armoire that had one of those mirrors that really honestly makes you look fat. But when you first look at the mirror, you are unsure if it's the mirror or it's you. And so I was with my husband, kept commenting on, wow, I really need to make a change. And at some point, I realized that it was the mirror. And realizing how what we see and what we say to ourselves when we see those things is really not very kind. And here I was for literally 24 hours thinking, something's going on here. I really need to start exercising and eating differently. And maybe this being kind to myself is not really working before I realized that the problem was not me. It was the mirror. And so I was really not on the same team as my body there. I was immediately shifting back into judgment mode. And so I offer that just notice when you are being sort of a fat mirror to yourself and not being kind to yourself and really getting yourself stuck in negativity and um, gray color glasses rather than rose colored glasses. The other thing that came out of that fat mirror, so it actually did do some um, kind, helpful things, is that my husband said at one point during this first 24 hours, um, men don't even know what a fat mirror is most often. Um, He said, I wish you could see yourself like I see you. And this comment really struck me. And I would ask you to ask yourself the same question. What if you could see yourself the way others saw you? 
And so that comment of his is what inspired me to offer a group coaching session on this topic to get the conversation started and um, to write a blog post of the same name. And I encourage all of you listeners to take a listen to my blog or to, I should say, read my blog. And there's a couple of posts there on this topic that I think you will find helpful in shifting your perspective. And I would love it if you signed up to get it in your in basket. I have a lot of um, fun topics of things that get shared here in small bits, but I love to write. And the um, blogs there are quite full of sort of wisdom and humor on living and loving better. So the tools are where I want to start. And I will weave in some stories and some strategies along the way. So the first tool I want to share in changing your relationship with your body is asking yourself useful questions rather than harmful questions. And I have alluded to this a few times in the podcast. I often talk about empowering questions versus disempowering questions. And you can think about this this way, but I actually, in this case with your body, make them useful and not harmful. And I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about the harm that we do to ourselves. Many of our listeners work in healthcare and many of us have taken an oath to do no harm to ourselves. And yet, well, an oath to do no harm, I should say. And we are very good at doing no harm to others. And yet we walk through life doing harm to ourselves. And so I very much want to encourage you to notice when you're doing that. And Asking yourself harmful questions is part of that. And so I would like to offer some not harmful questions that can get you started in the spirit of starting with positivity. And then we'll talk a little bit more about being negative to yourself and hurting yourself. So I often teach in yoga, um, positive body image and finding things about your body that you like. And so the first question I would ask is, can you pause and close your eyes and bring perhaps a hand to heart and ask yourself, is there a body part of yours that you love? If it's hard to come up with one, a few things to help you are to think about things that you do well, Um, think about things that you don't dislike, think about things that on your body that remind you of someone. Maybe you have your mom's nose or um, my husband has my mom, his, my mother-in-law's earlobes and they very much remind me of her. So what I love about myself are my toes. And it's one of the reasons I love teaching yoga is that I get to look at my toes a lot. I think perhaps that's, it was a yoga exercise that got me to start liking my toes. But once you've decided you like them, you look at them and you appreciate them. The other part of my body that I like is my neckline. So I wear a lot of V-neck shirts and sweaters and a lot of fun necklaces. So it's possible to notice these things and use them to your advantage. If you love your toes, get pedicures, get a toe ring. If you love your neck, get some beautiful necklaces. Um, I have a client who came to this coaching session, the live coaching session. And I asked her later, what was the body part that she loved? And she said, she couldn't think of one. And so I actually helped her to work through this. And I want to share what we figured out because I think it will help others. So she loves wearing fun earrings. And so I said, well, what about loving your earlobes? Because they allow you to carry those fun earrings and choose things and accessorize. And when you look at it that way, she was immediately on board with that and loves her earrings and was able to like her earlobes. And so we are all starting somewhere. No place is better or worse to start. And everyone has a different level of issues with this or a different approach or different places where they get stuck. And so if you get stuck, try not to beat yourself up about it. Just get creative, get curious. Other body parts that people often share that they like, perhaps their smile, perhaps their chin, perhaps the um, lines by your eyes, as opposed to, um, I forget what we call them, um, crow's feet. Uh, Someone mentioned that they're smile lines. Um, And so thinking about 
things like that. Uh, you can also think about body parts that maybe you can love your uterus that perhaps served you well to have babies um, or your tummy that perhaps served you well. Um, maybe your hands, they've allowed you to do surgeries or they've allowed you to hold your babies um, or allowed you to write something. So thinking about things that have um, served you well in life can be a lovely way to do it. Um, question number two, thinking about things that your body does well. So the opposite question of this is that most of us spend tons of time thinking about what our bodies cannot do or can no longer do. We think about the pain that they cause us. So thinking about what your body does well. And this isn't Pollyanna, it actually really helps. And I will um, be vulnerable here and say that I've had quite a few uh, surgeries over the years. I've had some totally unexpected medical problems. And rather than thinking of myself as someone who's broken and things that I can't do, I really do focus on what I can do. As a result of these surgeries, I actually had quite a bit of chronic pain for a while, and I was very focused on the pain and how it impacted my life and all the things that I could no longer do with my right hand that I very much enjoyed doing. I used to do a lot of circumcisions, and I was quite good at them as a pediatrician. And after my surgery, I had damage to the brachial plexus, and I could no longer do them. And um, I also used to be a competitive tennis player in college, and I can no longer do overhand um, sports with my arm because of my surgery and some scar tissue. So I spent a long time being cranky about this. And what I have discovered through coaching and through yoga and through some of this work is that focusing on what my body can do, it can still do so many amazing things. And that this shifts my mind out of these um, negative spaces and, and really into a positive space, into appreciating and partnering with it. So when you're focusing on what you can't do, you are not a partner with your body. And this makes everything harder. And so since you and your body are always on this journey together, and one of the things about mindfulness is bringing mind and body together. Yoga is bringing mind and body together. And so really sinking into this idea that you're on the same team. What do you do well? So my list is that, you know, I teach yoga. I can do yoga. I can cook. I can drive. I can hold babies. I can um, type. I notice when I can carry things. I notice when I can hike on a trail. I notice the beautiful flowers that I see. And um, I have an incredible nose. I can smell good and bad smells, but my nose and my sense of smell is incredibly good. And so again, focusing on funny things like that about yourself, appreciate these unique things that you can do and that you're good at rather than these stories in your mind about things you don't do. I have always thought since I was a little girl that I wasn't a good artist. I have a brother who's an incredible artist and was a very naturally talented at it. And so I've always said, I can't draw. Um, and so this did not serve me well. Um, you know, drawing is not my strong suit. I will add that, but thinking kindly about myself and thinking about I'm beautiful at arranging flowers, for example, something I truly love. I love taking photographs of nature, something I love. And so these are things that my hands can do that are different than drawing and focusing on those. So the next question I would have you ask, and I do find that as I mentioned in the first question, doing hand to heart, placing a hand on your heart, placing a hand atop to really connect into yourself as you think about these questions can be really a powerful tool, especially when you have a lot of negative habitual thought patterns about yourself. So the next question I would ask is what is one thing about yourself that you would not change? Could it be your humor, your determination, your laugh, your love of sunflowers, babies, walking on the beach in the morning, something that you love about yourself that you would not change. And you can think about it now, you can think about it later. During the mindful moment, I will. Um, we will spend a little bit of time reflecting mindfully on these questions. And so you can go back to that later as well. 
The second strategy to change your relationship with your body is to focus on the journey that you and your body have been on. And this is another one that we will um, incorporate into our mindful moment at the end of our podcast. And I do want to remind all of you that at the end of every one of these mindful healers podcasts, we offer as a gift, a three to 10 minute mindful meditation or mindfulness exercise for you to enjoy. And so if you haven't had a chance to check those out, go back and listen. You can also find many of them on my YouTube channel if you just want to do the mindful moments. And um, I strongly encourage you to try them. A little bit of mindfulness practice. So the journey that you and your body have been on. And I want to introduce this tool as um, telling a story about it as well. So this tool I taught in the mindful uh, coaching live group session. And at that session, a cardiologist attended. And the very next day, she had an 80 year old woman in her clinic who wasn't doing well and needed some oxygen. And this woman was incredibly frustrated and mad at herself. And the cardiologist shared this tool with her and she found it so helpful. It eased her journey and um, really connected them in a powerful and meaningful way. And so I also want to offer that many of the things we share in this podcast, share with your patients, share with your family, share with your friends, suggest that they listen. There's so many good nuggets here, whether you choose to pursue more coaching, choose to pursue a mindfulness practice, or choose to join me for yoga. There are so many good nuggets that people of all ages and people of all backgrounds and all careers can benefit from. Our intention is mindful healing, and that is relevant to everyone. Though we do tailor most of our content to those who are healers, we all need mindful healing. And so this tool of thinking about the journey that you and your body have been on is an incredible tool for mindful healing. So I offer the opportunity, once again, if you're not driving, to do hand to heart and close your eyes. If you're driving, you just listen or not in a safe spot in which to do that. So think about the journey that you and your body have been on in this life. All the places that you have been from the time of being a tiny, small human, all the things that you have learned to do walk, talk, ride a bike, swim. Perhaps you have a special talent, draw pictures, take photographs, do yoga, play tennis, whatever it might be. All the things that you have learned and done together, all the places that you have traveled together, the mountains you have climbed together, You and these muscles and these bones and these cells and this brain and these hands and these feet have gone a multitude of places together. Taking a moment to just think about that and appreciate that, I would offer even maybe journal it. And then to think about all the things you've smelled, all the things you've seen, all the food you've tasted, all the incredible music and sounds you've heard, the laughter you've heard, your baby's first word, the um, just amazing things in the world that we hear and the things that we felt and touched, perhaps the rain, perhaps the sunshine, perhaps someone else's human touch. We've enjoyed our mother's touch or a mother figure's touch. We've enjoyed holding our children. We've enjoyed the touch of a partner. We've had a lot of heartbreaks together. We've experienced a lot of love together. And so seeing yourself as a partner with your body on this journey can be a really different way to have a relationship. How are you a partner? How are you a teammate? How can you and your body get through life in the most easeful, loving, kind, enjoyable, fun, delightful, and luxurious way possible? So the next tip is the do no harm tip. And I want to focus a little bit on this one. And the key piece of this tip is to notice. So mindfulness, the very first thing about it is to pause and be present. That's why I call my business pause and presence, but to notice and to be in that moment and to be aware of what's happening. 
And so, so often our habitual thoughts about ourselves are mean. We judge ourselves, we push ourselves, and we don't listen. And so pausing and stopping to notice how you are mean to yourself. We are often mean to ourselves about being mean to ourselves also. Um, and so noticing, I had a client the other day who I was coaching who had eaten a bunch of pizza because she was feeling depressed and discouraged. And then she was beating herself up for having eaten the pizza. And so it's just layers upon layers of not being kind to yourself and realizing that, you know, maybe the first action wasn't healthy for you, but being mean to yourself about it is also even more unhealthy. And when we are mean, we create stress and we re release cortisol, which is not healthy for us. So before you switch to being kind to yourself, showing yourself compassion and being loving, the very first step is just to notice how often you're mean to yourself. And that was really what the fat mirror showed me in this sort of funny way that I was immediately okay with shifting back into being mean to myself, even after having done all of this work. And so the key and the skill is to notice and to be able to switch out of it more quickly. We all fall back into old habits, but what you learn through the work of mindfulness and coaching is to spot it and to shift it and to pivot more easily and more quickly. So noticing the meanness and remembering that you don't have to shift right away. The first step is noticing, then being perhaps neutral or accepting, then being kind, then being compassionate, and then ultimately getting to self-love. And we'll get there at some point, but we do not have to start there. It is a progress and a process and a long continuum. There is plenty of time. So the next tip is addressing that continuum and that we all have to pass through neutral. So we don't have to shift from being mean to ourselves to being kind. We don't have to shift from thinking that I look terrible and fat and ugly and old to, oh my gosh, I'm so gorgeous. We have to pass through neutral. And so coming up with some neutral statements are really helpful. And so they may seem a low bar, but you have to believe these statements and you have to really embody them and accept them. And so I look okay for my age. I look good for a doc who's been working through a pandemic. I look pretty good or above average for a mom of three kids. I am able to do a lot of things for someone who has had four surgeries. And so when I think about it that way, I immediately feel hopeful and inspired and just much more kind and gentle to myself. And so you don't have to decide you look great and you don't have to love yourself immediately. And maybe again, that sounds low bar, but I think for many, many people I know, we have to start somewhere. And when you start saying these things to yourself, you really do honestly, truly believe them. They sink in and then you are developing a different relationship with yourself. You're nudging it one degree by one degree by one degree. And all of that cumulatively, if you think about a GPS, gets you to a very different place within a pretty short amount of time. One day by day by day by day. And 365 days later, you're someone completely different. So tip number five is the gift that my husband offered. See yourself as someone else sees you. So I have started to think, when I look in the mirror, what does my husband see? What do my children see? What do my parents see? What do my patients see? What do my friends see? What do my yoga students see? What do my coaching clients see? Almost none of them think negative things when they look at you. In fact, most of them find things that they wish that they had, or they're jealous, or that they love about you. And so I offer that. What do they see? And I want to offer this thought. The biggest gift you can give yourself is to love yourself the way you wish someone else did. So in relationship coaching, most of us want someone else to love us, bring us flowers, show us love to make us feel good. And what you learn through relationship coaching is that your job is really to do it for yourself. And you learn why, and I 
strongly encourage you to all engage in coaching. It is an absolute game changer for a life better lived. But the short version is stop waiting for someone else to do it and do it for yourself. And so when we want someone else to love us, love yourself, love things about yourself, give yourself hugs. In yoga, we often do a self-hugging practice, just wrapping your arms around and giving yourself a hug. Hand to heart is another thing you can do to give yourself um, physical touch. There's a lot of evidence that physical touch is incredibly good for your health, whether it comes from someone else or yourself. When you do hand to heart and you press into that heart space, you release oxytocin, which is a feel-good hormone. Enjoy it. It also decreases cortisol levels in your saliva. And so spend some time hand to heart. Spend some time giving yourself a brief hug. Um, Spend some time Even hands, um, we do hands to heart center in yoga, rub your palms together. Notice how good it feels. Notice each finger pad rubbing against each other. I share those cues a lot in yoga and um, it's very purposeful and intentional. So stop waiting for someone else and give yourself this gift of loving yourself the way you wish someone else did. So my last tip is to have fun. And this topic is often a very uh, emotional, stressful, and triggering topic for a lot of people. And so is there a way you can have fun with it? Those of you who coach with me know that I love fun words. And so I was working with a client on this, trying to find a way to think about herself that was fun. And the word I came up with was voluptuous. This did not work for her, but I have actually taken it for myself. And so... I've decided that I'm voluptuous, not because I have a big bust, but I have some curves and I have some rolls and that when I think about that word, I literally just giggle. And so thinking about a word that you can describe to yourself. So maybe I'm not as slender as I was um, a few years ago, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. Maybe I'm not as in shape as I was a few years ago. Um, I have shifted a bit. Um, during the last few years in terms of how I care for myself and what I do. But I can describe myself as voluptuous or curvaceous or using fun words that are sort of energetic in a different way, noticing things that are your superpower or your best asset, things like that. So I encourage you to play with words and find one that feels really good to you and just start using it in a fun, lighthearted way. Feeling lighthearted and non-attachment to things, and even if it doesn't really feel true, if you know that you're sort of poking fun at yourself, um, it can really lighten the heaviness of the journey and open your eyes. Humor is an incredible tool to help you progress in changing your relationship, shifting your approach. So that is what I have for you today in this solo cast. And Stay tuned for a few others coming up talking about love as a strategy, which was another mindful coaching session I did recently that I really want to share some of these amazing tools and also changing your relationship with money. All of these have been personal journeys for me and things that I have been able to dramatically help clients with shift their perspective and change their relationships and improve their lives. So as usual, I would like to end with a few reflection questions. What body part do you love? What is your body especially good at? What parts of your body do not cause you pain or problems? What is one thing about yourself that you would never want to change? What do others say about you that you can practice believing and noticing yourself? Are you willing to commit to no longer doing yourself harm? What thoughts might help you get to neutral? And lastly, what is your fun word to describe yourself, voluptuous or otherwise? So a nudge to sign up to receive my blog in your email. There are several several recent pieces exploring this topic further. There's a link to sign up in the show notes. My blog is a short pieces written 
about wise, loving, and inspiring writings on the journey of life and love. And I would love to share them with you. Another gentle nudge to join me for yoga. I practice a lot of kindness to self and um, shifting your approach to your body and your days. And many people feel like they have to be a yogi or love yoga or be able to stand on their head. And my yoga practice is not about that. And so I encourage you to try it. Join my live stream, go to my website and sign up or subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some of the classes there. There are both 30 minute and 60 minute delicious, luxurious classes to breathe more deeply and find calm. I also encourage you to join me for coaching. It's really the work. You can consume these podcasts, you can read books, you can read the blog, but the work is in actually digging into your mind, finding your thoughts, looking into the nooks and crannies of your life experience and having the epiphanies and the breakthrough moments. Many of the tips I share in the podcasts come from coaching moments with clients and they're just, it's just the most powerful, incredible life-changing tool I have ever come across. It is more impactful for parents and marriages and healthy children and living than anything I shared in pediatrics over my 20 years in practice. So if you want to learn how to like yourself and be on the same team as your body and live happier and healthier and sustain these changes, reach out and coach with me. And then the last thing I want to share today is the opportunity for an intensive reset at a retreat with me. For work such as this, I would strongly recommend doing the six-day longer Nourish and Transform uh, coaching yoga and culinary medicine retreat. You do not have to have a yoga practice. You do not have to be a yogi. You just have to be willing to try. It will help you develop a new relationship with yourself for the rest of your life journey. Stay on after the sound of the singing bowl for a mindful moment focused on some of the questions we I brought up in today's podcast. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present and start truly living your one wild and precious life, Come find us at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. Discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. Welcome to today's mindful moment, mindful reflection about you. Find a comfortable and safe spot to pause. If you're driving, please opt out and come back and try this later. I encourage you to find a comfortable seat if possible, for this is more of an introspective reflective journey and would be more comfortable sitting down. But if you are standing, just pause. And I invite you to bring your hands to heart. One hand atop the heart space, the other hand atop, and press in gently, connecting with your heart and connecting with yourself. If you're comfortable, close your eyes gently. If it's not comfortable for you to close your eyes, a light, soft, loose gaze several feet in front of you. And take in a long, deep, nourishing inhale through your nose. Use the breath as a tool here. Breathe in and exhale, let go of the tension of the day. Breathe in kindness, good thoughts, warmth, love, nourishment. 
and exhale already a bit of the resistance, resentment, bitterness, judgment. And pause. Take a moment here to think about one body part that you love. Is it your toes? Is it your neckline? Could it be your earlobes? Could it be your smile lines, your chin, your belly? Could it be your strong legs? Take a moment to think of one body part that you love. And if you can't think of one, think about something that allows you to do something that you love. Perhaps your hands allow you to be a surgeon or to carry your babies, your arms, to hold them. Can you love that about them? And take that and tuck it into the pocket behind your heart to carry with you when you are not feeling so gracious and loving about your body, you can go right back to that. Take in a deep inhale to seal it in. And an exhale, letting go of any judgment about challenges of figuring out what it was. And an inhale, appreciating that body part. And the exhale, letting things go. And a pause just to be in stillness. Notice how you feel. Gently press that hand into the heart space once again, releasing a bit of oxytocin, kindness, compassion, openness, curiosity come with that. An ability to learn. And then to think about something about yourself that you would not wish to change. Perhaps your sense of humor perhaps your skill at math, perhaps your ability to um, have a good sense of direction, perhaps your sense of smell, perhaps your eye in noticing color, perhaps your love of babies, whatever it is, choose something that you love about yourself that has brought you joy in your life that you would not change. Doesn't have to be something you're good at, but something you enjoy about yourself. Something you would be sad if it were gone, if you're having trouble. Taking in a deep inhale, sealing that in. Tucking it behind your heart with intention and an exhale release. And a pause. And now, a few moments to reflect on the journeys that you and this amazing body of yours have been on your whole life taking a moment to think about all the steps that you and this amazing body have walked together. You even learned to walk together. All the countries you've walked in, the cities you've explored, the classes you've walked to, the trails and hikes, the mountains you've walked on, the beaches and the sand you've walked on. Taking a moment to appreciate the feet and where they have taken you. Thinking now about all the things that you have learned together, all the subjects you have studied, the sports you have learned to play, the meals you have learned to cook, the skills that you have now that you didn't before, even learning to cut with scissors, you've learned how to do that together. Perhaps learning to draw, learning to paint, learning to do massage, whatever it might be. We all have different skills. None is better than the other. Just appreciating what you have learned. And then thinking about all the places you've traveled together, you and this body. All the airplanes you have been on together. The 
the places you've seen and explored, the food you've tasted, the smells you've enjoyed, the sights you've seen, the sounds you've heard, whether it be nature, birds, music, the laughter of children. And whether these sights and sounds and smells are on a travel or even just in your own home or in your work, just realizing the millions and millions and millions of things that you and this body and cells, muscles, bones, all the things have done together. And perhaps some of them have needed some repairs or have sent you some messages of pain. And can you just send them some compassion for joining you on these journeys and doing the best that they could and appreciating all that they did allow you to do? Taking in a long, deep inhale, sealing in just some of those journeys, knowing that there's so much more if you choose to come back and repeat this reflection and see on different days, what might you remember? Huge exhale. A final press of the hand into your heart space, wishing yourself well, sending this body kindness and compassion for the long journey ahead. Slowly lower your hands and open your eyes and let the light back in. Thank you all for sharing this mindful moment with me. See you again soon.